Hello and welcome. My name's Adrian Cherry and this is the first in a series of short recordings, hopefully, about using QCAD for drawing up artwork for etching. So I assume you've got QCAD installed, so we'll fire that up, get that running. Now before we start doing the drawings, and I'll run through my setup here in a minute, the, uh, there's a couple of things I think you need to decide up front. The main one is your drawing scale. There seems to be two options here. First is drawing 12 inches to the foot. So with a works drawing, uh, if you read the dimensions, if you've got a four foot wheel, then you draw a circle four foot. The only downside to this is then if you've got any model dimensions, so like holes for pickups or screw clearance holes, then you're going to have to enlarge those from your model scale up to the prototype scale, so you're going to have to multiply up the other way. So obviously the second option is actually to draw at your scale that you've chosen, so 7mm to the foot for example. So on that, if you've got a works drawing and a 4 foot wheel, then you'll have to reduce that to your scale. So in this case it would be 28mm, you would then draw a circle at 28mm. That has the advantage then if you need to draw a clearance hole or any model dimensions that you just draw them as they are rather than scaling. I had a works drawing with lots of full scale dimensions so I chose the 12 inches to the foot root. The second thing is the metal thickness that you're etching. If you're doing clearance holes there's a certain tolerance applied and that will vary according to the metal thickness. Again, there's reports published in MRJ and on the websites giving you an indication of how much allowance to, to give. So you always keep a note of what metal thickness that you're aiming for etching. And then finally, um, I think even at this stage, you need to decide who you're going to use to get the etchings done. It seems that the different companies have slightly different requirements and so it's worth talking to the people that you've decided on and following their instructions. I chose PPD, they've been very good. My first set of etchings went through without any problems. I'm very pleased with a rapid turnaround. So this guide will be um, tailored to PPD etches and drawing up at 12 inches to the foot scale. So anyway, let's get on. So yeah, set the drawing scale first. So under the menu, edit, we've got the drawing preferences. Uh, dimension settings, again, I can't remember what the default settings on installation were. I can't remember changing these, but I've probably set engineering and increased the precision uh, a bit. Uh, this is the main one then, drawing units. Because I've chosen 12 inches to the foot, I decided I'm drawing in inches and I'm going to um, have the paper unit as inches. If you were drawing 7 millimetres to the foot, uh, then you probably want millimetres for drawing and the paper unit. The grid, that's going to be automatic. Um, page, this just sets up the, uh, for, for printing the page. And the viewport I set here at a scale 1 to 1. Um, when I export it later, then that scale can be reduced down to the 7 millimeters to the foot. But for the minute, I'm just doing 1 to 1 inches. So that's my paper setup. So you can see the rulers here give me my dimensions in inches. Once you get above 12 inches, it then does revert to feet and inches, which is useful. Now all of these, well, first of all, it's quite cramped on this. I'm using it on a small laptop. So if you've got a bigger screen, you'll be able to spread things out. Um, there's a series of toolbars across the top, which um, relate to the zooming, editing, cutting, pasting, all the usual stuff. There's the modify toolbar, which are included, and all of these can be switched on and off under view. So under view toolbars, you can see all of the different options that are set, but I've these set 
Uh, the main one I use is Modify, which has put the cross at the top. Uh, where to go next? Yeah, layer list. On the right hand side, I include two dialog boxes. These are turned on and off by these menus, and I think this was there. So if I click that on and off, that shows the layer list disappears. So this layer list is what you need for doing the etching. I use Nort as a construction layer, and these are just sort of like tracing paper um, layered on top of each other. Um, so for PPD, you use the first one, so I actually number them as well, so that I can find. So the first one is outline, color black. You can set the colors, you can set the line thicknesses, the line types. Um, So, again, two will be metal fill, again, black. And then when we get to the next layer, which is for the half etch, so we can do half etch outline, and we change that to red. And final one for the moment, we'll do half edge fill, again red. Now there are more, because you need to do the half edge on the back, which will be in blue. Uh, I do another layer for text, um, and then the tags and everything around, so I usually end up with about 10 layers, but for the minute that'll do. You can see they're all visible. That's what the I stands for, and the one that's highlighted is the active one. So we'll leave that as the active one. Once we start drawing the lines, the property editor, um, you can then switch the layers and the colours. Um, and then most of the drawing is started off from this uh, toolbar widget on the left hand side. So basically lines, circles, arcs, text, dimensions, various options. The other one that's use visible is the command line down here. This is very useful for when you're actually adding lines to uh, type in a length rather than having to try and click on the uh, on the page you can actually type in dimensions so we need to make sure that that is visible so on there, we've got the command line there ticked. So you can see if we move that, it disappears. So view, command. And you'll notice after all of these commands, in brackets, there's a couple of letters, and these are all shortcuts. So rather than clicking on the menus, once you start getting into it, you'll find that it's a lot quicker just to type in a couple of letters. So rather than clicking on command line, you can see that's GM, so if I just type in GM, you can see there that the command line has appeared. And I think that is as much as I want to cover on that one. Next one, we'll go on to actually getting our first set of lines drawn.